thanks to Hot Click Marketing for supporting this video. For more information, go to their website. I can't deny that an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley with no fans feels very, very strange. For me to still be at home and not be down in the capital, walking up and down Wembley Way, talking to fans, just feels very odd. What will it be like watching a game in an empty stadium? I'm one of those people who switches on the natural stadium sound rather than the artificial crowd, and I'll be doing that again today. Hopefully City can overcome Arsenal and we can look forward to an all-Manchester final. But you never know in football, Arsenal 8-1 to one against winning. Two-horse race, well, that's long odds. But Mark Lillis, who's the first of the people I'm speaking to today, remembers well when he played down at Wembley in the full members cup final, um, scored as well in that game. So he knows what it's like as a player to play at Wembley. What does he think of today? And then we'll get some views of other City players and fans. It's a great day, unfortunately for us. Obviously, we lost 5-4, but um, I was very proud on the day. It was on a Sunday because we played the Manchester Derby on the Saturday at Old Trafford, drew 2-2 and then flew up to London and played next day. So... I've got great memories of that, but obviously we didn't bring the cup back for the, for, for the supporters who were fantastic on the day. You're a lifelong blue. You've played at Wembley. Uh, you know what it means to play in front of the City fans. Is there any bit of you today that feels strange because it's a Wembley semi-final, 90,000 empty seats watching this game? Yeah, firstly, for me, it'd be strange. And as a player, I think it's going to be strange, especially walking out of Wembley. You know, you, you, you look to your right or left and there's mad blue fans there and whoever Chelsea fans are at the other side so it's tough but they get you know the you know the professional now aren't they the players and that um and and they've took it on board and and they've just got on with it which I think's great and and the managers have and the coaches and the head coaches have done it. Obviously Laporte you'd expect to be in central defence. Who would be alongside him of the current squad? Is it Garcia? Is it Fernandinho? Is it Stones? Is it Otamendi? What would you do next to Laporte? We're taking it at Laporte would be a first choice. I like Fernandinho there. I think um, he reads it well. He, you know, he, he can distribute well. Um, keeps his shape well as well. But um, I think I think I'd, I'd, I'd go along with him. This is going to be a very different semi-final than than we used to. We used to. I certainly am used to being among. 30,000 City fans inside Wembley creating a fantastic atmosphere, a carnival. This is going to be very different. Do you think that's going to have any impact on this semi-final? Um, no, because, again, the players will know the importance of it. They know how hard they've worked to to get to that stage and wouldn't want to, to slip up in any way. Um, I think it, it actually plays even more of an advantage to City because the way City plays, from defending to having possession to attacking in the final third, it's all worked on. So teams that play off the cuff, which is pretty much most other teams, will will struggle with that because sometimes they look for an inspiration from defense. City will have the, the inspiration with knowing, I know what I need to do having got possession of the ball here. I look to my left, I know he should be there. I look further forward, he should be there. And it, it's all already prescripted. So the players already know what they need to do, where someone should be, what run they should be making. And therefore, they don't need the fans to, to, to give a lift to, um, you know, raise a game in any way. The players, you know, do this stuff in training. So I actually think that it plays into Man City's hands because... They have already got the pictures in mind uh, and they're just putting the colours in it. On that basis, then, you're expecting a City win and through to the final? Yes, I am. Um, I think City are just chugging along nicely um, and it's great that they got, you know, the FA and the Champions League so it keeps, it keeps their, their foot on the gas to not ease up, not to let up um, and players will be wanting to play in every part of these games. I just can't get my head around that, mate. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the empty stadiums. I don't like the no crowds. Um, but it's better than not playing. You were a player, though, who thrived on playing to the crowd. How would you enjoy playing in empty stadiums? 
Well, no, I, I, I don't think I could. I, I, I would have definitely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even got in the squad if it was based on that. Because I did play to the crowd. That was that was my joy. My joy of playing football. Um, and I remember, as we're talking about Manchester, I remember when I first came to Manchester, and my first game was against Chelsea uh, at Main Road. And the entire crowd were all singing the uh, chicory tip song, um, Son of My Father, to old oh, Rodney Rodney. And that's what I played the game for. I, I, I love playing for the fans. It motivated me. I love doing tricks for the fans. Now the teams didn't like it too much, but there you go. But uh, playing in front of nobody, Ian would be, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I could do it. The best part about the Wembley days for me is being part of that big family, you know, on the way down, you start seeing cars, then at the service station, you see, you know, Blues you haven't met for ages, then down at Wembley. What's this group of big people? Oh, they're all around uh, someone called Ian Cheeseman as he's doing his <laughs> blog. And, you know, it's, it's that big family that means everything to me as a City fan. But more than, I think the older you get, probably almost more than the games, although the games obviously are vital. So it's not the same excitement, but the prospect of, of playing uh, the other lot in the final, I have to say, is, uh, is an exciting bit for me. I think that'd be great. Hi, I'm Gregory. I'm in California and I'll be watching the game at a watch party with the members of the New York City, Manchester City Supporters Club. In terms of the result today, I can't see City losing uh, over the last couple of games against Arsenal. It's always been a pretty easy victory. So I'm expecting 3-1 maybe if, if Arsenal do anything, you know. Have you any concerns about Arsenal? Because obviously Mikel Arteta knows Pep very well and they might be stung by the fact that City have, have beaten them the last two or three times they've played them. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, it's the master and the apprentice, you know what I mean? I know Arteta was with them for a number of years, but Pep and the quality of players, I, I, I really don't think that's going to happen. City has uh, had a pretty good recent history against uh, Arsenal. Uh, I think won seven in a row, uh, beat Arsenal 3 uh, nothing both times they've played them this year. Uh, I think Arteta has them playing pretty well. I think it's going to be a close game. I think City wins 2-1. to one. Where are you watching the game from? You're obviously in the States. I am. Uh, I'm actually at home in Warrington, Virginia. I'm a member of the uh, Capital City Blues, uh, which is the official supporters club in Washington, D.C. Do you watch these games together? I mean, I know you're not physically together, but do you all chat to each other while the game goes on? We do. Typically, uh, we have watch parties at our home bar, which is the, the Lucky Bar in, in D.C. Uh, but um, during the lockdown, uh, prior to the restart, we'd actually done a number of virtual happy hours just to kind of catch up and see how everyone was doing. And then we've also done uh, virtual watch parties for uh, every single city match uh, since the restart. A definite win. Definite win. Um, and I'd even go as far as 3-0. Very confident then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe you're a bit of a poet. You've written a poem for tonight's game to represent the fans who are not there, of course. Because we're not really here, are we? No. Do you want to read it to <laughs> us? I'll read it to you right now, Ian. Okay, everyone. Um, it's true that we're not really here. These times are quite bizarre. But you can guarantee for now, we're cheering from afar. <laughs> Come on. Disappointing, very disappointing. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, Silva, uh, De Bruyne had disappointing games. Uh, Walker uh, had a shocker, uh, you know, leading to, to both of uh, Aubameyang's goals. Uh, so, you know, a fair play to uh, Arsenal. I think they, they played well. They were uh, compact uh, on defense, played very well defensively. Uh, you know, when I saw David Luiz's name in the starting lineup, I was pretty excited based on you know how poorly he played the last time, but he he had a great game. So uh, uh, you know, congratulations to Arsenal, and uh, you know, frankly, with the the connection with uh, Arteta, I, I hope they go on and and win the whole thing now. I think this might be a, a blip on the radar screen if if you look at uh, you know how well City's been playing uh, since the restart. Um, you know that they've been scoring a lot of goals. I think they've I think they've had three different uh, games where they've won five nothing. 
uh, you know, with the, the occasional uh, blip on the radar screen against, uh, you know, Chelsea and that, you know, the very poor game against Southampton overall, they've, they've played pretty well. So, um, uh, you know, I, th- I think if they can get uh, hold on against uh, Real Madrid, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the, the quarterfinals with the, uh, the, the Lyon and, and Juventus. Uh, you know, so I, I think if they can get past, uh, especially if they play uh, Juventus, looking at the, the teams that are left after that and, and how they've been playing, I, I think City have a, a shot at, at making it to the final, uh, maybe even winning the whole thing. The last touch, it just wasn't there, you know. I, I don't know, they didn't seem to be... I don't know, you, you think about it, Laporte, you know, Sterling, Silva, you know, all of them had chances there that could have, you know, you know, a toss of a coin would have went in, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was just... Um, you know, but they they stuck at it. You know, City stuck at it. It wasn't as if they gave up. You know what I mean? They were, you know, they were counting their in the second half. They were counting their half most of the game. You know, so it's just, uh, yeah, frustrating. But there you go. You're a City supporter. That's what happens. <laughs> I thought Arsenal put up a great performance. I had a feeling before the game to be truthful when the, the, we beat them twice. And, you know, the, this modern day now with the technology, they would have sussed us out. Really, what formations we're going to play and Arteta's been next to Pep for a long time so uh, I just had this gut feeling you know they'll they'll defend really well they'll defend deep and they, they defend with numbers and that's what they did I thought first half I thought we could have maybe come out a bit quicker with the passing uh, and getting in behind them more but uh, second half we upped it but uh, you've got to give credit to them I mean I think what they've had two chances and took them which is, which is really good but you know when you see the second half, um, the way they defended, you know, there was there was a line of four and then five in front of that and then one. So it was difficult, but uh, we've got to learn from it and we've got to make sure, like you just said before, with the uh, Champions League coming up, we've got to learn from that. Because if not, you know, um, I don't think we'll go that far in, 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 the, uh, in that cup. Presumably Pep picked his strongest team for this game because he saw this as a cup final. Do you think now he has to think again if that's his strongest team for the Champions League, or was that just a, a one-off? I think he'll, I think he'll know his, his uh, strongest team for for, for, for the cup. Um, Do you not think that was it today? Then do you not think that's how it, how he concluded it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he, he, he's. I love the fella. He's a fantastic guy in that, and uh, I think he'll have some up his sleeve, you know. But um, I, I don't think that's the starting eleven. I think we've got the signs of the squad are getting older, just losing that little bit of the thing as we do as we get older. Um, I think the defence personally is ripping up. I like Laporte in the back. I think Garcia is going to be a good one, but I think at 19, he just needs a bit more experience there at the back. And I thought the two, Walker and Mendy tonight, they seem to be miles away with what was going on. I mean, the two goals there, they seem to be ball watching. Same again last week. You know, they just seem to be... I don't think mentally. I think they're very good players, but I think to be playing in Pep's system, the back four got to be mentally switched on. And for me, they switch off a lot. Um, because they play so high. Um, I think some of it, you know, might be because they get bored as well. Because... Everything's all around the midfield and up front, and we hold the possession a lot. So the defence don't really get a lot of game time, say, as other sides get. So I think that's a bit of an issue as well. But I think we need a a strong centre-back straight off, a company-style, big, ball-winning, commanding centre-back. I think that's where the money's got to go this summer. When we're playing with Gundogan in that middle of that part, we don't seem to have the same zip around the midfield with a ball. We seem to play very, very slow and pedestrian. And if you look at when we normally play, we're getting all the goals. We seem to zip the ball around the, the part very, very quick. And before sides can get back and defend, um, you know, we, we're past them. Like you see, like De Bruyne or whatever, playing the really, really fast balls in and we boom, balls in the back of the net. When Gundogan tends to play for me, he seems to slow it down and we lose that advantage. I think when we're playing with Fernandinho or even Rodgers to an extent, I think we pass it around faster. 
you know, I think we need to be a bit quicker when he's playing. Now in the Champions League, based on that, and has that altered your opinion, or is it not? Is it irrelevant? I think we're a little bit suspect at the back. I think I start with Foden for a start because when Foden plays, I mean, we saw him, um, you know, a few weeks ago where he had that, you know, man of the match performance. He was absolutely on fire. Um, he's a young kid that's really hungry, and I'd certainly give him a go. Poor. Um, all over the field. Um, we, we started off quite well first 10 minutes, but um, we just didn't get going. We just didn't get going at all. Didn't have any shots on goal worth talking about. And uh, no, it was just poor. Arsenal turned up to start off with. Um, I think Jesus has been getting better. And I don't know, uh, De, De Bruyne wasn't in it all the time you know he was he was trying but shots weren't going anywhere and um, I think it was a collective thing this evening um, and then for some reason Arsenal's defence <laughs> um, just they, they got it together but we're very sloppy at the back um, I think we still miss company we've not replaced him I think uh, we were really jittery looked nervous and um, yeah I think Arsenal deserve the win they deserve the win tonight You've not written any poetry then in defeat. <laughs> I might do. I might do. I need. I used to write jolly poetry. I might go down the, the dark side a bit. So hopefully I won't need to. And it's nothing to do with the new kit. But um, yeah, I might. I might write a dark one just because it's really frustrating. You know, the the, the FA Cup, the domestic cups have been really good for us the last couple of years, and this is the the thing that we could have won. We've got the Champions League coming up and, and I think that's really knocked the confidence and and I don't even know about the start. I think Foden should have started. I think we should have given Foden the chance. He's hungry for it. He's, he's a, you know, he's shown, he, he can play for England now. He should be called up because, yeah, he should have started. Uh, it's a shame that we've not got Aguero in, but um, I don't know. Sterling looked great the last few games, but it just didn't gel tonight. It just didn't, it just didn't get going for me. You know, that's cup football, isn't it? That's what can happen. So, disappointing. I, I think I was thinking back to 1981 and the excitement of that semi-final and so on. And the weird thing is not feeling as flat and as gutted as we should. I think it's a very strange time at the minute with uh, everything that's going on. It doesn't feel like a, a semi-final defeat is, in the cup is one of the worst feelings in the world. It doesn't feel it. This was a side that sat back sort of um, Atletico style, you know, the way that they defeated Liverpool and the, the, the world's press criticising for it. I don't think Arsenal will get the same criticism for effectively doing the same thing. I think any team that we're playing who come out a bit and where there's, you know, there's the space that comes from that, I think we can exploit it. The only question mark is defensively, you know, whether we're going to cope with the, with the, with the you know, the, the top European sides because clearly that, that is an area of weakness. But I do think the Champions League games will be totally different. I think one of the things this week is, you know, it's one game, um, we're drawing conclusions, but I wonder how we'd be feeling sitting here if we hadn't won the CAS appeal. Because the difference is, you know, we can start thinking already, well, Pep will be thinking about next season, how we can strengthen areas. I think we'd be feeling a heck of a lot different had we not won that appeal. So a disappointing day in the end at Wembley for City, going down by two goals to nil to Arsenal. Mikel Arteta, indeed was the apprentice who beat the master. But well done to them. They defended well. Bamiyang scored two good goals and City just couldn't find the back of the net. Two more Premier League games to go. I, of course, will do vlogs from those two and then the Champions League game against Real Madrid. Um, thanks very much to the sponsors, uh, Hot Click Marketing and CharlesLouis.co.uk, who've stuck with me right till the end of the season. And despite today being a defeat day, never easy to take. You know what? It's still great to be a blue. It always is. Big shout out to the three companies that have supported the products that I put out under the Forever Blue title throughout the year, the podcast and the vlogs. See you all soon.